Don't be naive. There are difficult times ahead. As the end approaches, people are going to be self-absorbed, money-hungry, self-promoting, stuck-up, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude, coarse, dog-eat-dog, unbending, slanderers, impulsively wild, savage, cynical, treacherous, ruthless, bloated, windbags, addicted to lust, and allergic to God. Our world is broken, and the effects of that brokenness increasingly overwhelm us. Families are deteriorating. Fathers are often absent or passive and unengaged. Mothers are growing less maternal. Sexual compulsivity is rampant. Abuse of every kind is on the rise. Eating disorders are killing people. People are in crisis, and followers of Christ are not exempt. As our global society increases in complexity, size, and brokenness, there are growing numbers of people who struggle with underlying issues that seem to be impervious to traditional methods of ministry or discipling. Traditional discipleship has tended to focus on helping people above the waterline. But in today's world, we increasingly need training to help us minister to the issues hidden below. While people still need help getting established in the basics of walking with Christ, we also need to learn to minister to people more effectively in issues below the waterline. Keeping our next generation of leaders emotionally healthy is key to our mission. This is why it's critical for each laborer to develop inside-out discipling skills. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. So the next morning, when I was just with the Lord in my quiet time, I sort of asked, Lord, what happened? What was that about? As I talked to the Lord about that, I said, you know, Lord, we don't punish our daughter in anger. We don't, like, jerk at her arm like my mom did. What is it? And I felt like just in, again, in a still small voice, he said, you are shutting your daughter down emotionally by not listening to her. And so I, I look back over my walk with God, and I think for so many years, I heard the Word's voice deeply just through meeting with Him in the Word. But, um, and I still do that. I still meet with the Lord in the Word. I still memorize verses. But this new aspect has just developed my intimacy so much. It's just been such a privilege to listen to the Lord in prayer. Learning to tune in and discern God's voice enhances our intimacy with Him, our knowledge of His truth, and our ability to minister deeply to others. Our seminars train people in the biblical skill of listening to God, helping them discern His voice both in community and one-on-one. -on -one. The Lord has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. The wounding of our hearts keeps us from experiencing God, from living the abundant life that He designed for us, from maximizing our contribution. Inner Healing Prayer is a God-focused ministry that helps people to experience the truth that sets captives free. I think I concluded as a kid that, you know, why is my dad always upset? and uh, there must be something wrong with me. I didn't know I concluded that. It was just kind of buried in there, and I just really hated myself. I then my friend prayed and asked the Lord, um, you know, where were you when Jim was feeling this? And uh, before my friend could ask another question, uh, Jesus just puts his hand on my shoulder and says, you're my son. And at that point, my heart was just really struck um, with the feelings of worth and value in a place where there had been a lot of pain and shame. I don't mind telling you I cried hard, <laughs> cried really hard. And, you know, God's allowed me the privilege of praying with some other people. And uh, it's just really neat to see Him helping people experience what He's trying to tell them through the Word. I think we all know truth, but we just have a real hard time experiencing it as true of us. PRT facilitates day-and-a-half-long inner healing prayer seminars for our staff and missionaries around the world. We also train laborers 
to add this to their skills as they disciple others. If we walk in the light, God Himself being the light, we also experience a shared life with one another as the sacrificed blood of Jesus, God's Son, purges all our sin. One specific type of woundedness is so prevalent today that it needs to be addressed separately. Most people struggle with living freely and purely in their God-given sexuality. I have learned several things from both this external and internal struggle. Uh, the first thing is that I've learned that it's easier to obtain liberty in terms of your sexual purity than it is to preserve it. Uh, for when you think you're strong, it's when you begin to realize just how weak and vulnerable you are. You've got to stay in fellowship and you've got to stay committed to those disciplines and those habits that led you to freedom. One of the, uh, the keys for me in breaking free uh, was joining an Into Light group, which is really just a group of men who've decided to take this area of their life very seriously. They've been involved in, in sexual sin long enough and they're sick of it. What that did for me was break the power of the enemy because what was hidden and what he would often remind me of, of what I have done, uh, once it had been confessed and brought into the light where I could experience God's forgiveness, there was a breaking of that power. Through the training PRT offers, sexual struggles are brought fully into the light so that the power of shame and addictions can be broken. Learn how to facilitate a group in your area using this specially designed study. If you enter your place of worship and about to make an offering, you suddenly remember a grudge a friend has against you, abandon your offering, leave immediately, go to this friend and make things right. The next step deals with our relationships. How many of our ministries are stifled by pent-up bitterness? Yet harboring bitterness is like drinking poison and hoping it kills the other person. PRT mediates conflicts around the world between staff, couples, and their families. The biggest conflict that we experienced happened in the seven years of our marriage. At that time, I was in my middle life crisis. I felt I need more attention. I felt more time from Leah, but she was busy taking care of our little children. I couldn't get her to listen to me without being interrupted by the children. Therefore, I was feeling ignored. I'm, I was rejected and I, I was full of anger. And I feel my expectation to become number one and needed by Him failed. But by His grace, we could pass that conflict but never resolve the conflict. After 14 years of our marriage, we have a privilege to be able to experience this relational healing mediation process. And God gave us many good insights into our marriage, what happened in our relationships. It was a deep and intense process, but it has changed our relationship significantly since then. We can resolve our conflicts, our differences more easily. Our relational healing seminars focus on personal peacemaking skills and time-tested processes for mediating conflict. Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you've been given, and then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. God uniquely designed you, even before you were born. He created and gifted you for a special contribution to His kingdom. We all have a God-given desire to experience fulfillment in life and ministry. Life in ministry was in a fog for me when I attended the personal contribution assessment. 
I knew my Myers-Briggs four-letter code. I knew some pieces of the way that God had wired me together. I had some desires for ministry, and I had an overview of my roles and gifting. But it was like a giant box of puzzle pieces that were dumped on a table, and I didn't know how to put them together. When I went to the PCA, one of the things I discovered is the presentations were tailored to help me see through that fog in ministry. There was a lot of interaction with staff from across the country, realizing that we we're all in a lot of the same places of, of understanding our gifting and our roles. There were practical work times that allowed me to process and reflect. There was time to synthesize and watch God put those puzzle pieces together. The personal assessment process helps Navigator staff discover their God-given design, desires, and best ministry contribution. Living and ministering in ways that are consistent with your God-given design and desires are key to experiencing fulfillment in ministry. The personal contribution assessment is given multiple times throughout the year. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Busyness is not a synonym for kingdom work. Busyness is what happens when we forget who God is. When we neglect margin, and live life in overload. We experience stress without recovery. This leads to physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual burnout. Early on in my staff reviews, my staff director would say, Karen, you set good boundaries and then you completely break all of them. So I would start a semester and I would set boundaries for my time and what I would do and then a couple of months in, I would just think, how is watching a movie tonight or reading a book or just hanging out with friends, how is that more valuable than helping a college student walk with God or just building a relationship with them or something like that on campus? So I continued just that pattern of setting boundaries and then breaking them. I had the time and the energy to do that, but about five years in, my staff team went through a time of significant conflict that lasted the majority of the school year. And even though in the end we experienced reconciliation, I really left the year just feeling emotionally and relationally exhausted. I just started to recognize, like, I don't have energy to do my job. I had a really difficult time preparing for my one-on-one -on -one appointments with the women that I was meeting with. I didn't want to befriend any of the staff people, which is not typical for me. The whole time, actually, I just felt like I was failing in every part of life, and I just couldn't maintain um, just a healthy, a healthy life and a healthy work atmosphere. So at the end of the summer, I had decided I'll finish my commitment with the Navigators, but then after that, I think that I'm finished um, doing vocational ministry. I just want a job where I don't have to relate to people. PRT helps staff apply the biblical principles of margin and rest through our sabbatical process. Around the world, we have advised missionaries on how to take a guided three to six month sabbatical. We also conduct a sabbatical orientation workshop twice a year for those who want more information about the sabbatical process. Our calling as navigators is to advance the gospel among spiritual generations. As our broken world takes its toll on these generations, we need to find new holistic ways to minister to them. This will involve above-the-line discipleship the basics of walking with the Lord that we've been imparting for decades, while addressing their below-the-line issues that may be holding them back. This is discipleship from the inside out. <laughs>